Okay, hello, hello, happy new year. I'm glad to be here. It's the 1st of January and I'm not supposed to work today, but I decided I want to try something new. I decided I want to create episodes that are completely spontaneous, um, talking about whatever comes up and whenever I feel chatty to just hit record and go for it. So welcome to this very first one. Now, yeah, New Year's Eve yesterday, I'm starting to wonder if it's even worth it, sleeping late and then not having an energized um, 1st of January. I feel dead today. I feel tired and inspired at the same time. Is that a thing? Tired and inspired? Um, I've often felt that in the past where whenever I feel extremely tired, I also have a moment of more inspiration. Somehow, I guess fatigue turns off a part of my brain, maybe the analytical part, or I don't know what it is. It, it might turn off some part of the brain. It helps me just be one that one step closer to my intuition, to my inspiration, to um, it's, it's the moment I write more or have more ideas, which is crazy because I'm tired. And so I feel like not doing anything. And at the same time, I have ideas and maybe the fact that I'm not doing anything that helps me feel inspired. So I just created a vision board for 2024. Um, I decided to just go for it, pick some images, um, some stock images, but also some existing photos, which is fun to do because it makes it more real. I'm not really including a lot of quotes from someone else more like my own words my own ideas my own pictures um so yeah and I think one of the words I put on there let me see if I can pull it up um one of the words I put on there is I think it's family or love because I'm so grateful that this year 2023 I was really able to go to Belgium I went to Belgium twice to see my family I spent Christmas with my family and it has been four years since the last time we spent Christmas together. So Christmas was always my favorite night of the year um, where me and my grandmother are way too eager to to give a lot of gifts and unwrap a lot of gifts to big frustration of my brother who's like, hey, we should have conversations too. You know, it shouldn't be like one person's unwrapping a gift and we're already thinking about the next one, you know, so um being more mindful about okay hey here's this person unwrapping a gift and maybe it's something they asked for and why did they ask for it and why is it important to them or why does that thing or hobby or passion make them happy um yeah to just have conversations about that so I'm grateful for um the ability and I, and I guess I needed it more somehow this year I needed more family time. I needed more time in Belgium. And I have times where I don't need a lot of time in Belgium. I'm like, oh, every year and a half, see ya, you know. But somehow this past year, I have felt the need to spend more time with my parents, spend more time with my family, I guess with many shifts and changes. Um, 2023, oh man, I just, um, finally my business boomed. Uh, because of the business side of things um, coaching is I'm not too passionate about coaching anymore which is a weird thing to say here on the healthy high achievers podcast but it's not it's not that I'm not passionate anymore about coaching that's a mistake um, what I wanted to say is I'm not too passionate about one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore so sitting with one person um I think I, I killed my own passion in one-on-one -on -one coaching because I was trained at the Functional Medicine Coaching Academy. I was trained to coach someone in 20 minutes. A whole year, every week, we had 20-minute sessions. And I was able to bring change and bring people to new insights in 20 minutes. And then I graduated. And I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer my coaching sessions, right? And then I realized most people, or I thought I had to offer one hour sessions because I was like, you know, people go to therapy and it's always one hour or 15 minutes. And um, like for people to have value, I should at least maybe give offer 45 minutes. 
So I did 45 minute sessions for over two years. And I think that killed my passion for coaching. It killed, killed is a, is a big word, isn't it? It, it? it affected, it negatively affected <laughs> um, my coaching skills as well. Because I think when I was coaching in 20 minute sessions, I was so laser focused on a person on those 20 minutes on not going off on a bunny trail, um, making sure the person doesn't just say the same, tell me the same story all over again that they've told friends and family maybe 20 times already, right? So really just like get 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 that time value um, to reach a result. So um, yeah, I, I kill, not killed, I negatively impacted or affected my own passion and and coaching skills. What I do still like are guided journaling sessions. So I'm super passionate about that still. I go live a lot on Insight Timer. I have a lot of people showing up and um, I've been wanting to maybe offer it on social media, but then again, it's getting clients and people from social media is really hard. And I came to the realization that I wanna use my socials more to show my life, you know, to make these little compilation reels that you see on my feed, to share some journal prompts from time to time, um, to just share more videos of my life in Peru, maybe. Um, and not too often, because I used to, I was doing two or three a week, and I have my team for that as well. I have my virtual team, but still, it didn't feel aligned. Like all of the podcast interviews, um, I did them, I recorded them all in June and then we started posting them until now. And by the time it gets posted, I'm like, the passion's gone. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to rewatch it. I'm like, yeah, you know, that was back then. Um, and so that was, I mean, batching is good, but that was a mistake. So, well, I wasn't planning on talking about coaching today, but or what I was going to do with my business. But that's why I want to do these episodes that are completely spontaneous, maybe have one topic in my mind, non-scripted, um, and really step away from what I used to do, which was I need to write a script first, and then I need to look good. You know, my hair is all, it's like tiredness, haircut, whatever. Um, <laughs> so I don't want to do the whole edited thing anymore record it send it off to uh, my assistant who then adds the podcast intro and does all the things and adds the seo keywords and puts them on uh youtube and the podcast and and then share snippets on instagram and we all know i mean entrepreneurs online entrepreneurs know that podcast snippets are the ones the the instagram posts or reels that get the least engagement or likes or i don't know if people care about podcast snippets on instagram so i don't want to do that anymore i just feel like i want to record even if it's a six minute um episode or it's it's just something really short or if it's audio only or if it's in the evening when i feel inspired just follow that inspiration even though it's dark and i don't have the perfect light from my window anymore to record like just not care um and I think it's the counter movement of what I learned three years ago when I started my business you start learning all of these things from business coaches and how to do social media and how the all of the how to's and the techniques and the copywriting and the and then you do all those things and you realize your followers don't care when you use that business voice or that copywriting or that official uh, here are the four tips to increase your energy, whatever. So people want to just hear your voice. People want to know who you are. And it's true. When I see someone interesting on Instagram, I'm like, oh, hey, who's this person? I go to their link in bio and I'm like, oh, they have a website. Let's see what they do. You know, And on their website, I want to find out exactly what they do and what they offer and why, you know? Um, but if I want to know about them as a person, I will go to their Instagram. I don't want to follow them and then only see reels and posts about their business. You know, 
that's me. Maybe other people are different, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do me and that's all I can do. And so that's why I'm gonna change things up. Even I'm gonna interview people still about their journey. Maybe they have interesting life stories or, or burnout recovery or what made them reach a point where they're a healthy high achiever or almost a healthy high achiever or sometimes, I mean, we're never always a healthy high achiever. Sometimes we're also exhausted overachievers and same goes for me. Um, I, I walk the talk, but still sometimes I cross my limits. So um, what was I going to talk about today? I think I wanted to share some of my 2024 goals. My mind was talking about different things too, about my visit to Belgium. I was thinking about... Um, the winter blues I had in Belgium because I went now in December and I was like people um dear family and friends I love spending Christmas with you but you're not gonna see me here anymore in a long time in winter <laughs> I'm gonna visit you in summer you know just summer in Europe is awesome there are a lot of music festivals there's a lot of things to do you can just meet friends and walk in the park or sit by a lake, picnic, visit a different city, take a bus four hours to Paris, you know, all these things. And in winter, it really hit me how even in inside the house, my parents' house, the living room was dark at 1 p.m. because there's no sun. It's cloudy. It's dark. You see here right now in Cusco, in Peru, that's where I am. It's cloudy. But look at my screen for those of you who are watching on YouTube. I mean, hello, you can still see a lot of light. Um, Zoom filter is doing its work on my tired um, face because I stayed up until 4, 4 a.m. last night. Um, so, yeah, there's no sunlight in winter. It's like six months in the year <laughs> where there's no sun. And I remember almost no sun. There are some days that are sunny, not too many. Um, but then I called my husband, Charlie, and my mom was sitting next to me and we had a video call and it was 5 p.m. in Belgium. So it was dark, dark, dark already. And it was 11 a.m. here in Peru. And so I was like, oh, maybe he's still hanging at the house, maybe just waking up. Uh, it was a Sunday, I think. So I was like, maybe he went out and now he's still sleeping. And he answers a call outside, full sun in his... Uh, just like a top, not even a t-shirt, like a, what do you call it for men? A top, a marcelica, we would say in, in, in Dutch, in Flemish. Um, and just walking walking our dog. And my mom was like, oh, sun, there's sun in Cusco. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, that's true. That's one of the reasons why I love being in Cusco is because the whole year through, we are so close to the equator that it is... It is so easy i mean you have the sun the whole year through and it's awesome it's um even in rainy season the sun comes through once a day so you never really lack vitamin d here so i'm grateful for that and um yeah 2024 2023 was a year of a lot of changes we moved houses i got married in peru um Oh, what else? Work really changed, new clients, new services, more journaling. Um, I traveled to New York and Miami and like the US for the first time in my life, um, which is crazy because most of my clients are American and um, I had never been to the US. So it has always been just Europe and Latin America. So I'm I'm grateful. I got to travel and I saw New York. I saw a Broadway show, Moulin Rouge. I love musicals. And I was like, maybe it's overrated. You know, it's more expensive. I know it's Broadway, but it's probably overrated. Um, it definitely isn't. It was so, so, so worth it. And Moulin Rouge is a movie I really love. So that made it extra. Like, I know the story, but then the songs are completely different in a musical. So... Oh, that was so great. And then there was something else I wanted to mention about 2023. New York, American clients. Oh, and I met my, I have one Belgian client, uh, funny enough. And we met in person when I was in Belgium just now. 
and it's it's the second client I got to meet in person so far. Um, the first one was Christelle. She's a wedding photographer in Miami. I got to meet her in person there. And now my client, my Belgian client, we went for dinner and it's weird. Ever since the pandemic, I think we got used to meeting people through Zoom or online. And then seeing that person in, in person, it's different, but it's the same at the same time, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do from now on. I'm going to wrap this one up. I might post it without even a podcast intro. I'm just like, I'm going to go really raw and real this year. Um, and I'm going to really focus on my existing clients, my existing offers. Um, for those of you who were with me from the beginning, you know, I had and have uh, my first mini course was and is um, Give Your Brain a Break, which is a 10-day, five-minute-a-day um, audio series, audio course that every day teaches you a different technique to shut off that busy brain in just five minutes. So there's breathing techniques, there's mini meditations, visualizations, all these things. Um, and I remember when I recorded it three years ago, I did a challenge I had some people participate and pay a small fee and that was awesome but then I didn't really have people buying it until now and then I decided to post it on insight timer which is a, a meditation app it's free um, I think the courses are paid though you have to be a plus member but I decided to just repurpose something I already have and post my Give Your Brain a Break mini course on Insight Time. And so people can participate, the people who are paying for the app. And I've had, without doing any marketing at all, without even sharing it on socials, I've had over a thousand students participating. Isn't that crazy? So sometimes it's also about offering something in the right place maybe social media wasn't the right place because I have a lot of people following me for living in Peru you know or or a lot of travelers who pass through Cusco that I meet here and then we follow each other and then so they're mostly like or, or friends from Belgium and so I think it's mostly people who want to see my life and also the curious people who maybe work with me or saw me somewhere got a recommendation to work with me and then they might check my stuff out on Instagram. You know, that's what I'm going to mostly use it for. Um, but so what I'm going to do, I'm going to focus on my existing clients, my existing products, um, improve them a little bit. I want to post uh, From Clutter to Calm on Insight Timer now as well. And some of you might have participated in my, that was my group coaching program. But it was also su always such a hassle to publish it and launch it I mean publish no I mean once it's published it's done but launch it and get enough people in one group to run through the program and do the group coaching calls and blah 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 and so now I want to re-record it and post it on insight time and just you know repurpose it so yeah this year I'm going to focus on my existing clients um, upsell collapse there's a very interesting collab coming with my client from Miami Christelle um that we're gonna publish soon so yeah that's gonna be my thing this year I did a whole three years of trying to build my business grow my business reach more people grow the email list have all the freebies blah, 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 blah. and now this year I reached a point where I'm happy about my um workload I shouldn't say this out loud because I do have space for more clients, <laughs> but um, I don't have to heavily market myself this year. So I can really work on my voice, um, being very authentic, raw, real, um, show a bit more of me and uh, be very clear about my offer and just repurpose the things I already have. The, the format for my guided journaling sessions, you know, do more of those for functional medicine practitioners and other doctors and just um, uh, groups, um, group sessions or people who, who do things with people. That's very vague. 
people who do things with people and who want to offer guided journaling sessions can just uh, do that with me. So yeah, that's what I want to do. Well, thank you. Um, I think I'm just going to hang on my couch. This was a very good first day of the year. 2024, it's going to be it's going to be chaotic, I think. There's going to be a lot of change. Um, that's something my Belgian client taught me. She does a lot of feng shui, like Chinese astrology. And it really, I'm a certified astrologer too. That's something like a passion I had during the pandemic. And I still use it for myself and sometimes for friends. And she does, my client does Chinese astrology. And it's really, it's, it's, the message is the same for 2024. And in summary, that is, there's not going to be any balance yet. It's going to still be a lot of changes, ups and downs and flowing, but you just need to stay grounded, stay balanced. I want to find a hobby where I can really bring out that fire in me. Um, Because you can do a lot of yoga and meditation, but then you also need something like kickboxing or whatever to just... um. Uh, especially if you work on your computer and from home the whole day. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, let me know if you like this episode, if you like the real raw Maya, or if you prefer the scripted Maya. <laughs> I can go scripted again if you prefer that. Um, I'm just going to listen to you. And well, thank you for sticking with me here and letting me accompany your day. Maybe you were doing the dishes or having a walk. And um, yeah, it was and maybe you just needed a friend or um, to listen to someone say random things about herself and about life. So, well, thank you so much and take care and have a happy new year.